Guys, again, we want to give you the friendly reminder that we are going to be moving the Popcorn Culture video portion of the pop from the Super Carlin Brothers YouTube channel over to the Popcorn Culture YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com slash popcorn culture. That is going to be happening on August 13th. So we'll have two more weeks, status quo, and then after that, we'll be in a new location with exactly the same product in every other way. Exactly. So uh, if you want to make sure you're not missing out on any future Popcorn Culture episodes, make sure you head over to the Popcorn Culture YouTube channel and just click that subscribe button, click the bell, make sure you are all sorts of notified, uh, and then, then you won't notice any difference at all. And if you're listening to this only via audio, then no- nothing will change at all anyway. Hooray! Yay! What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's me, Ben. I'm here. I'm co-hosting with you and I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm just, I'm real. I'm so tired. (laughs) Okay, so so Jay, you are you are coming off of a a weekend. Is this your first solo weekend uh, dad status with all three boys? Uh, I don't know if it's 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 the first time. It it might be. It might be with all three boys. And I dare say it wasn't just um uh the 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 typical weekend. You know what you might think of as Saturday Sunday plus Friday afternoon. Sure, you sure. Know, it was it was uh took took the day off of work on Friday, took the following Monday off of work. So really, really a good solid four days in a row there. Four days yeah. flying solo, two you, the twins got sick. Oh my gosh, dude. It was it was like the most it, this could have been this whole weekend could have been a movie, I felt like. I it was w- just so predictable. Like even going into it, I'm like, okay, okay. Like, I remember once upon a time when we were kids, um, mom and dad went to go run a marathon. I believe it was the Rock and Roll Marathon in San Diego, California. Okay, okay. And uh, in order to do this, they had to be out of the house for like three or four days while they were across the country. And so our grandparents came all the way down from New York just to babysit us for like, you know, four or five days in a row. Right. Thank. Th- oh, my God. So, so nice of them to do that. We all promptly got sick. Like all three of us, I want to say. Like horrifically. Like, I re- ho- Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember th- this might be the first time. <laughs> In my life that I remember being as sick as I was. Like, I remember, like, waking up and, like, being unable to keep my eyes open. Uh. And I, like, came downstairs and I was like... It's, like, the funny thing about... I thought about this so much, too, is, like, when I was a kid, I didn't really, like, realize that I was sick you know, so it was like, yeah. it was like, oh, like, you know, like my, my head is hurting, but like, I, I never would have attributed that to the understanding that I was in fact like ill. It yeah. would just be like, things are not as fast today, you know, and it would just be like that. And so like, I remember I got downstairs and I was like, I cannot, like my eyes just won't open. The light sensitivity uh, is awful. Ow. And then I, then I ended up, yeah, I, I think I may have been the first to go down and I'm pretty sure it was the morning that mom and dad left. Yeah. Like I hadn't even been. I had not been conscious while they had been gone yet. Yeah. And yeah, chronically sick. Uh, so anyway, but that's, so that's exactly what happened to you. Well, so that's exactly, I could, I felt like I could almost call this shot, you know, like I think there is a certain like parental inevitability of being alone with just the kids who have come down with an illness. Like, and it was like in my mind, like my brain was like working out the math sort of in the background as if it was aware of this inevitability, like, like some divine force was like, yeah, yeah, you, this, this is a thing that happens. Like it, it will happen to you. Like you, oh, sure. it's like, it's like how you, you have not spilled your drink for the last time, you know? Oh yes. Yes. You know, yes. yes. Like, you're going yeah. to spill your drink again. Right. And it's like, at some point you like you, Ben, you, you who have a kid on the way at some point you will be alone with the kid, kids, plural, maybe, and they will be sick, and Alice will not be there, and you will have to solo mission it. Oh, dear. I feel, oh dear. Like, I feel like this is a parental inevitability. If you're a parent watching or listening, please let me know if this has happened to you, because it's going to. 
Yeah, I mean, but, the, the funny thing too is that like, I feel like this was this was going to be a handful. Yeah. N- like if everything had gone perfectly. Yeah. Like having having three boys who are at least three and under all like, you know, be, like, just being able to like manage that, you know, like bath times, meals, nap times, like like doing all of those things and just not having like the extra set of hands just to like sort of be like, oh, for sure. For sure. It was already going to be a lot of work. And it was like it was it was just so frustrating because, yeah, it was like it was like my brain was doing the math in the background and it was just like now this is a weird opportunity because it's just beth and she's going to be like it's it's unusual for just beth to have a like trip sure. associated with it and it was like the universe was just like yeah yeah this looks like it's going to be the only one and that means uh even though mm, this should be a little more random it's uh it's um uh, mm, this is it this is it this is it and so but you know i you know, Beth left uh, on Friday morning, and that was a it was a very long day because I got you know I got to like say goodbye and help her you know get get ready to leave and stuff. So I'm already I'm starting at like 4 a.m. right out of the gate, and in some ways that was a blessing because it meant that I was like, well, I'm up, and I'll just like I'll unload the dishwasher and I'll get everyone's milk and water and stuff ready, and like that whole first day pretty good. Our mom came uh, that evening to help watch the kids because I had to uh, come here to work because we were doing a live stream for MuggleNet. Let me just say though, yeah. let me just say, because when when you were coming, like I just worked a normal work day or whatever, Yeah. Uh, but like I we, we were doing this this stream from what like seven to ten ish p.m. Yeah, and <clears throat> so like you're on your way into the office for the first time on this particular day. Yeah, and the the way that I knew that you were like tapped is you sent a message to our office manager Jordan and said, "Could you get someone to pick me up a Monster Energy drink?" Monster, and I was like, Jay, I don't know if I've been so baffled at a request <laughs> by you like in in such a long period of time. <laughs> like, like I was like, he said, what? And I was like, it must've been a typo. Like he, he wouldn't have, surely he wouldn't have like at, at most. He might've asked to brew a pot of coffee or something. Yes. Yeah. 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 A pot, no, but no monster energy. Drink. Was it, would it have been as weird if I had said red bull? Would that have like raised some eyebrows or was it like, Oh man, he like I, crossed I, over. I will say, yeah, no, no, no. I think, I think red bull would have been more. Okay. I would have been surprised, but it would have been like, okay, like it's, it's not been never that you and I have been tired enough that we, that we resorted to a red bull, but we're, we're typically coffee people in general. Like yeah, that's I mean, our, yeah, yeah. Th- we have a coffee company Colin brothers coffee check it out it's amazing we they, have candles there's one on the table right here wow 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 go ahead look at that look at that plug <laughs> so solid um but yeah like that's we're we're coffee people like we we're not like super energy drink people or at the very least haven't been for a very extended period of time yeah. I, I i do remember the very first time we ever got to go on vacation with our friends we were in high school and i believe maybe it was like the first year that you were driving but we were going to have like four of us all going up to Vermont together. Oh, yes, this ride. And I do remember that, like, all of us were going and literally buying, like, uh, like four packs of, like, Rockstar Energy Drink oh. or Red Bulls or, like, whatever the case may be. And we had, we had <clears throat> like, a cooler that had 30 energy drinks in it, and that was the product of, like, the four of us putting in focused effort to have as many energy drinks for this vacation as possible. Mm. And to us, that was just like, it was like, Oh yeah. Cause we're on vacation. So like we can have, like, we can go all we out. We can go all. This was the same as like when we'd bring like 40, like Coca Cola's with us camping with the GMA for one we're night, like, for one night. But look at us. We're all, go- we're going crazy. We have soda y'all <laughs> because what we need we between 9 PM yeah. and 9 AM the next morning is 10 sodas. Each. 10 <laughs> sodas. Bear in mind, at some point, we're definitely going to Waffle House where we'll also have coffee. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. At like two in the morning or something. So uh, the periods of time, I would say we were, it wouldn't have been nearly as like as unexpected. Yeah. But but getting that request and and Jordan telling me she was like she was like yeah like he he wants a monster and I was like no he doesn't. That's <laughs> like <laughs> incorrect. You, I was like listen, you misunderstood. <laughs> And sure enough, it, like what he made was like a monster sized <laughs> other drink, or <laughs> a monster sized ice water. Yeah. Like uh, what he meant was monster and like wombo, like yeah. that kind. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, like more of, but, yeah. but not the, not the, not like, the brand name monster. <laughs> right. But no. So, you know, we get here and, and you're, you had a, you had a monster and I was I like, did. man, this rallied. is, I felt like I, I, I was witnessing, uh, 
a rare bird. Well, here's let me I can break you down my the decision to go for the monster energy drink here because you're right. Typically I probably just would have gone for like a coffee okay. or something. But I'd already been up since four and it had been a very long day of just taking care of, you know, kiddos all day and stuff. Sure. And uh, it was like this there was this sort of weird feeling because I was up early, I sort of like got into that like in the zone uh point of like being awake at like eh, like 10 o'clock a.m or something sure you know and i was just like man i'm feeling good i'm being so productive right now i've got all the dishes put away you know despite i've got everyone down i've been able to stay ahead of the mess everything's looking pretty good and then sure enough by like two or three in the afternoon it was just like i am getting it was like basically bedtime for me you know right in terms of how long i'd been awake and i was like I got to stay awake and, you know, I, and, you know, I could power through for a while, but by the time, then I was like, not only are we going to do this live stream, like trivia live stream, like we do on the show, um, from time to time, but we were going to be on with MuggleNet, which is this like ginormous Harry Potter site that I've been reading for, you know, years. Sure. Which yes. is like, okay, like these, you know, and we're doing like this big collab. We're trying to like raise money for this charity. Just like, I really, I really, this isn't. If it was maybe just regular trivia night, maybe I could just like mustered up some. When I said that incorrectly on purpose, but um, <laughs> I could I could muster up some just energy and some enthusiasm. But I was like, no, I really got to be on because there's like more at stake on this particular one. So yeah, and we were we were facing off against yeah. y- like these people who are who are I mean right. It wasn't even just that we were hosting with MuggleNet. We were facing off against them. So I was like, I got to be like mentally sharp because we can't like i don't want to like look bad against another harry potter site i know, <laughs> you know? i know i know yeah it, it was like there are stakes there are stakes on this one and so i didn't i didn't want to go for the coffee because i drink so much coffee that i don't feel like it really gives me quite like a, an energy boost the way it, it once upon a time did sure and i was like you know what i really need to i need to not i need to go I need to like shock the system because I'm like, I need to be mentally prepared. And like, typically if I was going for an energy drink, it would probably be Red Bull. But as it were, that very week on uh, Good Mythical Morning, they had done an episode called um, What Happens When We Drink As Much Monster Energy As Humanly Possible. Oh, by, God. By which they mean they had like a dietitian on site who said like, based on your body weight, this is the uh, the largest amount you should consume safely safely okay okay i think it was like like five cans or something which they drank in like you know 15 minutes so they're like immediately getting crazy hyper oh my god and it's just sort of like watching their like you know creativity like explode out of them in that way which is just a funny episode but they were talking about the differences between like when they did this exact same episode with red bull versus monster and how there were different ingredients and stuff and i was like okay I would typically go for coffee, and if not coffee, I might opt for a Red Bull in rare circumstances. I need to go, I need to go, I need to totally shock the system with energy chemicals, I guess. (laughs) It sounds so bad. It sounds bad when you say it like that. It it didn't sound good from the start, (laughs) Yeah, and it's gotten worse. But you know what? I think I made the right call, because I was very on point for the stream. And, uh, yeah, that was, I think it's what I needed. You did good. I you did, did really good. good. The problem was then, however, that it, it carried forward <laughs> past the stream. Oh, and then you couldn't sleep. And, and so then, then I took like a, like a unisom to go to sleep oh, no. later that night. So it was fine, but which made me sleep nice and long and everyone else slept very long too. But, uh, then, uh, I don't know, was it Saturday? It must've been, no, Saturday was pretty okay. Saturday was okay. Um, I attempted to go to a Pokemon trading card game tournament to play in because Beth's parents came to relieve me for like a couple hours and I was like I probably won't be able to stay the whole time but maybe I can just play a couple games get a little bit of experience under my belt if I have to leave so be it someone gets a free win whatever sure sure you know and we could talk about that more later but everything was fine there I got a little break that day too that was good but then Sunday morning Sunday 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 this is when things started to go really south because now I'm three days in, so I'm already really tired. Wake up, and I see that Nick has just thrown up in his crib. And I was like, oh, no, buddy, what happened? Because, you know, not, nothing had seemed wrong. And my immediate assumption was just that he had, like, maybe, like, choked on something or, like, just had, like, a bad spit up or sure. something. Because he actually was acting completely like himself. Uh, like, he was very smiley, just immediately got up and started playing. And I sat him down. I got him and Nate up, and Nate looked fine, and... You know, I gave them breakfast and I'm upstairs like changing the sheets and stuff. And I come downstairs and I look at Nick and he is just, it's going again. And I'm like, oh no, this means you're actually sick, sick. 
this is bad, not good. Oh dear. The only only saving grace at this point was that it was just Nick and and it was just the throw up. Everything else seemed totally normal. <laughs> that that fine. sentence, just the throw up. Yeah, ju- yeah. It's like, this is fine. like you know what? You threw up. The worst the the worst thing about throw up is that you have to clean it up, and it's gross, and it smells bad. But once it's up, it's gone, right? I, no I big think deal. the worst thing is the words themselves. There's, yeah, I'm just like I'm I'm actively aware of it, and I'm like, what what word could we replace this with, just for the listener's sake? Had sponges. Had sponges. <laughs> had sponges. So Nick had sponges. This I know it's already working. Yes, I know. I feel this way better way about better. it because there's like a visceral reaction to yeah. the other thing, but sponges is fine. Yeah, so there were sponges. I cleaned them up with sponges. No, I didn't. It was probably just like paper towels and stuff. Oh, I don't okay. want to like waste a sponge, you know. So, so, well, certainly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Buy these sponges. Sponges ain't cheap. Exactly. Right, right. right. Yeah, well, my, my, spun bu- my sponge budget <laughs> is through the roof right now. I, we have a sponge subscription. <laughs> Of course you do. Yeah. And they're like scrubby buddies or something. Scrub daddies? Nope. Not scrub daddies. Not the face things. Oh. It's a different different sponge that mom turned me on to. And it comes in like a six pack once a month, which is great because it means like if at any point, like historically in my entire life, if ever I've been like, hmm, I don't know about the sponge, but what's the other option? Wasting another sponge? That's, I am like, yeah, I am like a sponge hoarder. Exactly. It's like, yeah, I will have the issue of like, no, this is fine. It's fine. It's, it's still fine. fine. And and like, I'll like run it for too long. And then I feel like what happens is I get like fed up with the idea of how long I ran the sponge. And then I'll go through the, like the, the other new one in like mm. the two pack, like way too quickly. Cause uh. I'm like, I'm like last time it went too long and I don't want that anymore. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question for you. I don't actually know the answer and maybe you don't either, but I'll just throw it out there. Okay. Has any, have you ever heard of like microwaving your your sponge as a way to like de- oh. like, like desanitize it. No, I have I have it? I have heard of this. It j- I've never done it. Okay, I don't okay. Know well, somebody out there is going to have to let me know whether or not that actually makes a difference. Sounds like a burnt popcorn question. It does. Yeah. It does. We'll have follow up. We'll we have will. Follow up. We'll have okay. Follow up. So yeah. anyway, but so so one one kid had sponges. Yeah, Nick had sponges, and then he went on again to just be totally fine. I was like, okay. Okay. Chances are you're not fine. So I'm just going to switch you over to a very light diet. You get nothing but water from now on until further notice. <laughs> okay. Until no sponges. Until no more sponges. And he, the rest of the morning, he was totally fine. We went down for naps and he got up and I walk in the room and I could I could smell the sponges then. Oh, no. And I was like, what's this? More what's sponges? This? More sponges. But I'll walk over to Nick and I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's just like coming from the diaper pail or something, which is by the door. So I'm like, maybe because that's where I put the... Uh, paper towels from earlier the previous sponges yeah the previous sponges so i was like maybe that's where it is uh not the case nate has now had sponges <laughs> <laughs> no he hasn't nate has had sponges i'm like no this is even worse because it's like oh not only does this mean that nick's thing was not was not just an, a nick thing and he's fine it means it was contagious <laughs> <laughs> and, and now and now, and now it's... nate has it now this is like proof of like absolute stomach but and now i'm like what could we have all eaten that could have done it? And I'm pretty sure what happened was that um, that Beth dropped Nick and Nate specifically off at some like Mother's Morning Out thing at church on the previous Thursday. It's the only time the two of them would have been isolated away from everyone else, and they're the only two that were affected. So I think that must be where it was from. They caught sponges. They caught sponges, which is a real bummer. Fortunately, Luke, I say that I'm going to knock on wood right now, has thus far showed no symptoms. I have showed no symptoms, but that was on a Thursday and they showed it's only on Sunday. So who's to say that now? Now I'm like, now I'm like approaching the three day mark myself. And I'm like, but, but, but I would have been around them on Thursday. So I don't know. True. Yeah. True. You'd think by now I'd have, I'd have shown any symptoms that I was getting it, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully nothing. Yes. I would like for this to continue to be a sponge free environment. Me too. Me too. Um, so. Yeah, Nate had sponges, and then I had to repeat my entire morning of like, you're on a very basic diet now, too. Nothing, you get water, you get crackers, you get just, you know, some pasta and toast and stuff like that. Sure. Very simple. And at least they were just still themselves. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I don't I don't know what this is. Maybe it was just like a, a one-time sponges deal. But then putting them to bed, they finally started getting fevers, and that <sighs> was bad. And then, yeah, so all of Monday was, was pretty bit rough because they had just fevers all day. And oh yeah, they they get very pathetic when <laughs> it's very pitiful. It's so sad. They, it's so sad. They just they just cried, and you don't know if it's because they're tired because you need to go back to sleep, or you just hungry because you're not really eating a lot. Do you just not feel good? Ugh, it's hard to know. Hard to know exactly what's going on. And then my only source of potential relief was that this is the day Beth is coming back now, and I'm like, at least 
by like five o'clock, Beth will be home. But oh my goodness, were the thunderstorms for real in Charlotte. So she gets like out of the Bahamas, okay, and gets into Charlotte where she has to like sprint to catch her plane. She gets on the plane, she sits down, she's like, oh, made it. And then gets promptly stuck in the plane for like a total, I think she was in the plane for a total of five hours. Oh! I know, like, don't, it's, oh man. It is less like, than an hour flight, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, you're, you're a puddle jumper at that point. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's less than, a, it's a three hour drive, you know? Right, right, Had right. Had you right. just gotten in the car could have just walked home basically basically so what should have been like a five o'clock return home ended up being more like a 10 o'clock return home and that was a real that was a real bummer i had to go through the whole process again but yeah it was a it was a very long time very long weekend and uh, of course the when when both the twins are sick they command way more of your attention because you got to you know make sure they're okay and the that's where Luke does not. That's what Luke does not like is when you're not paying attention to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like not only can I not pay attention to him, but you are not allowed to go near them. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Well, so that, what I actually do think is slightly hilarious about this is that we we have a a Patreon perk uh, that we record after every episode that that we call after the final pop, where we just record an extra 10, 15 minutes each week, uh, where we we just dive into a different topic, something we didn't get to during the main episode um and that's available at, uh, on patreon and literally last week's episode that came out on friday was almost entirely the discussion about the fact that you were heading into a solo dad yes. and like I, multi-day weekend it was if you're if you're a member of the patreon you can go listen to, if you haven't listened to that after the final pop go do it but yeah it was about how people were like leading up to this week People kept saying, you know, I kept telling people, oh, yeah, it's just me and the boys all weekend. Beth's, Beth's heading off to the Bahamas or whatever. And it was the reaction I was getting from people of like, oh, you think you can handle it? Like from like, uh, like be- I guess because I, I'm, I'm dad and I'm not mom. Right. And this is going to be like, I don't know. I don't know if you can handle the, for the ch- kids by yourself. And it was like, I, can, I, I think I was wearing that. Like <laughs> that, like badge as well. I'm just like, oh, I can do it. I, like, I can do. I, can do, it. Like, I, I of got this. I can do it. Everyone is really underestimate. It feels like people are underestimating me here. And so, like, <laughs> hilariously, it was like Monday evening. I'm like putting Luke to bed. Like the whole weekend's and Dad calls me and he's like, hey, I. I just saw on Beth's story that the kids are sick because, you know, I've been communicating with her. And she's like, oh, I, wish you, I mean, is there anything we could do? Like, I, I wish you'd said something. We could have, like, you know, come and he- came and helped. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I was like, no. I'm, I'm proving a point. <laughs> to, to who? I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. But I have to ask you this question because because I think it's an interesting segue into something I've been thinking about a little bit recently, okay. which is the the motivational force that is proving someone wrong. Oh, oh, it's a tremendous force, Ben. But it's it's like I don't I so it's, I don't want it to be. I, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's like like it is such it seems like the wrong it's like getting things done for the wrong reasons. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like I'm you know what? I'm going I'm to improve my life just to show you. Yeah. That's it. That's oh, it. this is this is the epitome, which is one of my top least favorite words, spelling-wise. Oh, epitome? Epitome. Yeah, that, that, that word can take a walk. That it word, can take it a can hike. Just, pff, bottom 10 words. Epitome. But this is... This is... Have you ever heard of the phrase of breakup bods? Yes, I have. Yeah. And it makes me really mad. It's so... It's the worst. It's just like, oh, you dumped me? Guess what? I'm getting in shape. And it's just like... It, it just it, seems so spiteful. It it seems very spiteful, and it's also one of those things where it's like, um, it, it's like the idea of being like, oh, I'm being broken up with, and now I'm gonna take care of myself, and it's like, well. Well, I mean, I do. I I'm glad <clears throat> that you were taking care of yourself. I wish that the the inspo maybe came from something else. Right. But but okay. So I have to tell you because I had a situation happen over the weekend that is is very very similar so alice and i broke up no i'm just i'm just kidding <laughs> um as i'm taking a sip <laughs> i know <laughs> total spew moment yeah or sponge, sponge. moment uh, wow good save good save um no so we were we we went tubing uh and this is this has actually just become like a like a really good way to spend time um with alice's side of the family because everybody really enjoys doing it and there's a great place on the james river that's close enough to us where we can go and kind of make a day out of it and you just get to be in the water and you know everybody just hangs out and it's a good good long fun day yeah so i um was out there and 
uh, w- one of the people who was with us was making the comment and it, it sort of like snowballed a little bit, but like I do lots of like yard work and outside work and I had spent the entire day prior running like a stump grinder with dad where I had literally just been like literally standing in direct sunlight yeah. for the entire day, right. you know, running, running a piece of heavy machinery. And so one of the people who's with us is like commenting on the fact that I have like a farmer's tan. So like, you know, like my arms are tan, but my shoulders aren't. Right. And it, 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 it like unfolded in a way that I was like, Oh no, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. My nightmare. Um, but it was, it was like a, Oh, you've got like, you got such a farmer's tan. That's hilarious. It's like, a, it's like a, it's like a dad tan. You've got like a dad bod. And I was like, hold up what you know and like i'm sitting in a tube which is not like you know honestly like probably the most flattering position for anybody by definition you're sort of like curled in you're just sort of yeah like flumped together there yes yeah flumped together flumped together as opposed to flumped which is a whole different verb entirely entirely yes yes webster dictionary is going to call us at some point in time and be like these boys we need them yes someone we need to we need to amend what sponge means yeah um but (laughs) also add in flump and flump right yes um but so, okay, so like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, it's one of these like just total offhand comments that I know that the person was like, so not intending to like make, like make me feel, you know, self-conscious or, or like concerned about myself or anything. But it was like, it was totally like lived in the back of my brain for the rest of the day. I was like, oh no, do I need to like, am I not like, because I, I mean, like I, I, I work out. A fair bit, I would say. You know, yeah. I put like a. Pretty... I, you do not have a dad bod. <laughs> okay. Well, I. Yeah. I, yeah so and I, you guys can't tell because Ben has a shirt on, but he's pretty shredded over there. Thanks, man. Yeah, exactly. you're welcome. It's, this is solving my my brain problem. <laughs> um, but I. Uh, so I yeah. So anyway, the the whole day though, and this is what actually made me think about being motivated to prove somebody wrong. But we are getting ready. The same person is going to be um, at our good buddy Mike's wedding week, which is uh, maybe at this point in time, like 10 days away. What? Where wow. I know it's so close uh, where we're going to be like at this like great big house. There's like a, like a community. No, there's a pool that is specifically just for the house. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm going to be like, you know, I'm going to be like shirtless and like next to the pool all week. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, what do I need to do between now and then to, to fix this problem? And I was like, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to be doing three days. I mean, what do I need? I mean, should I just be eating watermelon? Like, you know, it's a monster <laughs> energy. I'll tell you what. So <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so I'm my my mind immediately starts going into like overdrive of like, okay, what do I have to do to like fix this? And then the other part of me is like, you, you're pretty you're pretty steady with this anyway. Like, why why all of a sudden did this like one offhand comment drive me into such a a thought, you know a thought spiral? Right. To where I'm like, I got to change everything about the way I'm approaching my health right now. Um, yeah. So then it, then it really got me. Yeah. So what, what were you doing? Did you do something on the tubing ride to like prove them wrong? No, 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 no. I mean, this was, this was like the rest of the tubing ride. I was like, well, what do I need to change about my life? You're like planning out your strategy of how you're going to prove them wrong. Yes, exactly. Right. It's like, it's like, okay, okay. If if that's the case, I'm going to be more ripped than I've ever been in my entire life. Just because this one time, this one comment you made and I'll show you, you know, and it's like, you really um, what show them what you know right. like <laughs> um so i don't know i mean it, i i took it way too <laughs> I took it way too seriously it was being way too sensitive for sure alice assured me of that mm-hmm. um so i'm fine it's no big deal i'm working on it you need a spray tan i probably will get a spray tan mm-hmm. i probably mm-hmm. will get a spray tan so this is something that i swear alice came into our lives the the carlin crew the carlin clan yeah our our home family as we grew up and everything and i feel like this was like something that maybe everybody in our family like wanted to do like we, we talked several weeks ago i think on the pop about how in high school i had like real bad acne and i had heard that having a tan helps make acne less bad and so i always wanted to go to like a tanning bed but i never felt like i could go because i was afraid that like You'd be judged for it be yeah. judged for it. And so I think, I think similarly it was like, Oh, okay, well there's spray tans and spray tans are not like, you know, wildly unhealthy and there are like organic spray tans and like all this other type of stuff. But still, you know, it was like something that it felt like it felt like the, the decision to go and do that is directly tied to, to vanity in a way that's like, mm-hmm. that I think is actually like incorrect. Like you think it's tied to vanity, but it's like, if you do something that like makes you feel more confident in your own skin, then like, 
I, I feel like I can encourage that. Like, I think that that's a, like, I'm not saying anybody needs it. I'm saying if it makes you feel better, then that's a good thing. Right. And if it's not harming your body in some type of like negative chemical permanent yeah. problematic way. Tans are such an interesting one. Cause it's like, like if you go to like a tanning bed or something and just get blasted with the UV rays, like up close or whatever. Right. Like to me, it's like, one, there's like the negative association, yeah, with the vanity. And then there's two, it's like, this could maybe give you skin cancer, which is bad. And then there's three, which is like, are you a little bit cheating, like doing this? Like other people had to work hard and be outdoors in the sun, even maybe laying on towels. My, <gasps> you know, like, towels. You, like, what a, what a fake artificial tan you got from the same thing you didn't even work for it you weren't even outside wow <laughs> you know what i mean it's like it's such a weird thing with tans because like even even if you got a tan the natural way like from the sun it's still not great for you right right right, right. Yeah. i mean I, people are outside oh this makes me feel like a little weird and people are like mm. it's like if you're outside long enough, you'll just get a tan. And it's like, I don't really, I don't really think you can be outside too much. Well, you know, like that's I, always a sentiment. I don't like either. this is, this is like one of those things where it's like, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like there is, it's kind of like going to a tanning bed on a regular basis where you are just like putting yourself into a chamber where your entire body is being blasted all at once by it. It feels like that is an extreme concentration of all the worst parts of it. But then like the, the argument in my brain, I guess that that would be spinning is that it's also healthy to be outside. Like, you get vitamin D from the sun, right. which is like a healthy thing to like for mental health and, and all sorts of other stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like I, I I'm okay with being outside and yeah. getting a tan because I'm outside doing things. Right. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I me too. <laughs> but so I, but I, here's what I think happened because Alice is telling me, she's like half of your family has texted me about what the spray tan situation is going into Mike's wedding. And I, I what happened was she like she came in and she just made it okay for everybody to like do this all of a sudden you know because like she does it and it just makes her again makes her feel more confident and um i think that because of that it's almost like now now you had like that friend who can get you into the club or something even yeah. though you don't need a friend to get in the club the door's just open right it was like now you who can like guide you there it's like oh okay the barrier to entry has has gotten smaller. It, it's like it's it's very weird because very clearly there was some sort of like something about the culture of our family specifically must have like shut this door like in everyone's brain. Yeah. You know, like well, let, let me talk about that for a second, because I feel like the there I think growing up and seeing uh, characters like Gaston, you know, from like from like Beauty and the Beast or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not or something Gaston from beauty and the beast. Uh, it's, you are seeing someone who is like, who is cocky and arrogant in like all of like a very like negative way. Yeah. And I think somewhere along the way, the way that my brain started like delineating like confidence is that confidence is being arrogant and cocky. And it's like, that's not how it works. Right. You know, it's like, it's like there's, it's okay to be, to be confident. But I, I think that that was something that I, that like my brain fought every step of the way, especially like going through high school. It was like, I could never, I could never like latch on to anything long enough to where like, where I was like, I would almost feel self-conscious at any point in time for feeling confident. Right. Does that make no, sense? No, it does make sense. I mean, I think I experienced the same thing. Yeah. It was so, like, like there, like the line between the two things seemed like so razor thin that you may as well just stand over on the other side. <laughs> like, yes. Just don't even get near the line, you know, just. <laughs> right, right. Which is, which is a weird thing though, because I think that like it, there is probably that question of who are like the characters that you can like look to in, you know, these, these stories that you watch when you're growing up and stuff like that, that teach you good confidence. Right. You know, like, is there, is there like a character who like really nicely embodies? I mean, th weirdly, the answer is probably just the hero of almost every story though. Well, it, it <coughs> is, but like, you know, I think like when you look at Harry from Harry Potter, for example, he is not someone who I think is a great case study in confidence. Okay. You know, like I think, I mean, Harry deals with imposter syndrome for an enormous amount of the story. Sure. Okay. Like, like he doesn't really see himself quite as, as 
capable as he actually is. And in some ways, it's almost because the reason that he's capable is, it almost does go beyond mm -hmm. some some of the parameters that goes beyond like his own training and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it, it is prophetic yeah. in nature. Right. Um, <laughs> That's true. So who else can we assess? I don't know. Would you say like Captain America is probably a pretty good like Steve Rogers. See, Cap is like Cap is an odd one. Cap is an odd one too because because like you have the young Steve Rogers who is like you know Bucky Barnes' best friend and he's kind of like the scrawny little guy who can't get into like the military because he's got all these like health afflictions and stuff and he's like he's a very good person but like that it, it would be a very interesting case study to assess Steve Rogers and figure out whether or not him as a character is confident. Oh, I think, well, it's, you're right. it is tricky though as well, because you, a lot of the confidence might be sourced from being a super soldier, you know, certainly it's like, it's, it's one thing to be confident about your abilities, um, as a regular person. Like when you literally have a, an actual scientific super powered advantage, it's probably a lot easier to be very confident. Okay, but that, I think one thing you said there that I, th I also think plays into this really nicely because I I deal with this a lot myself is I can be confident in some of my abilities. Like I am aware of the fact that there are things that I am good at. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting to me is that like when I find myself in situations where I feel significantly less confident, my mind will like immediately start jumping to these scenarios where it's like, well, how can I get this person who is making me feel, uh, maybe not in the person I'm going to, cause I wouldn't want to put that on anybody. I would say, this circumstance is making me feel not confident. And what I would like to do is take all of the people here to a place where I am confident so that they can like see me in this different light. Mm. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like I have the ability to be confident when I am like in when, when I am near one of my abilities that makes me confident, right. You know, like, <laughs> like, but it's like, but I can't, I can't just take the confidence that I have, you know, in, in my ability to mountain bike or something and then apply that confidence to this task that I've never done before. Right. Like you're like, you have confidence, you have like localized confidence, not like overall. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and I think the difference is, yeah, when do you have confidence? You can have confidence in your abilities. And I would say that like, if you are a professional at something, if you have done a job for a very long period of time, if you are committed to a sport that you have been able to excel at um, a, a video game, like, I mean, don't, don't let don't let my examples limit the, the categories, but you can have confidence in those things but not have confidence in yourself. Mm. And it, I think that it's that question of like, how do you build that confidence in yourself where you can be self-assured, right? confident, yeah. uh, aware of your own self-worth, right? you know, because these are things that I think really come into play maybe in a lot of ways um, in like a, uh, like romantic way, you know, like, like attempting to date, Mm -hmm. um, like one thing that I tend to say or, or that I have seen is that I think that the person that you are dating is very frequently a reflection of your own sense of self-worth. So like if you have that one friend who like consistently is dating someone and you're like, you're great. This person is less great. Why? Why? What happened? You know, it's like what what I what I think is happening there is that they have a low measure of their own self worth, mm -hmm. and so they are they are choosing somebody that they think matches how they see themselves. Right. It's like this person makes lots of very obvious bad decisions all the time. Clearly, you you even can see that. Like, what? Is, why are you dating? Right. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's like you are you are able to like I can talk to you and you can identify these things. Like, yeah. I know it's not even that you're like missing them. It's like you. I know that you know. Um, like, this is bad. This is a toxic environment. <laughs> right. 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 Walk away. <laughs> Walk away. And and so that that becomes that 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 question of self esteem. Um, and I think I, I would say for myself, and again, it's probably always best to speak from your own experiences rather than trying to put them on other people. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but I would say that this was like a big, big, big thing, uh, for me going through high school and I would say it got even significantly more magnified when I got to college, but it was like the, the extremely limited expectation that, that like 
anybody would want anything to do with me Mm -hmm. like in 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 this particular sense like like that it would never be okay to like you know spot a girl from across a classroom and be like hi do you want to go get lunch yeah. Right. You know, like, because like that would be like so absurdly forward. Right. And, and like, a, a, not that it would be assuming, but like my fear would be that it would, that it would have that effect or something. Right. Um, but it's very possible that that wouldn't have been the case, you know, like it could have yeah. just been the type of thing where it'd be like, yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. It, it's, I mean, yeah, it, it, I know exactly what you're talking about. And that fear of that, like, oh, like you, you are not like worth that person's time to where that wouldn't be like a good thing. Where the weird thing is that like your own self-assurance might be specifically like what is attractive had you just done it. <laughs> but like you don't have the self-assurance to do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. That's yeah. I think that's that's extremely well said. It's yeah. like and I that's probably where in a lot of ways um, like we we watch the 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 dating show the bachelor and the bachelorette <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh i think very frequently you see very early there's there's always a situation where like the, the the you know the air quotes jerk of the house almost always catches the attention of the bachelor or the bachelorette like day one week one early and it's always the case that it's like the person that the main person has like chosen or has focused on or given the most time to or opened up to the most. And then it's so hard to assess too, because everyone else dislikes that person. And it's like, do they dislike that person out of just pure jealousy? There's certainly that, that possibility, but it also very frequently seems like the rest of the house is correct. And like what they've found is like, you may be like this person because they are far and away the most confident but that confidence is like like a skill. Right. Does that make sense? I think yeah, I think I know what you're trying to say. So it's yeah. it's like they're very likable very quickly because they're able to like put on that confidence. Like they're charm. like very charming. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like, like they're, they're like, good at being charming, good at talking to people. Exactly. Even if they are not necessarily a good person. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I, I feel like season in, season out, you see this, this always happen. And I, I think possibly the producers even know that this will happen because it makes for it, it makes for good well, TV or good the quest- drama. The question is, do the producers know and are they able to like arrange it when they're picking people or is this just like Lord of the Flies? You know, is oh, it like, like, is this like, it doesn't matter what group of people you put in there. This will always happen. Sure, you sure. Know, somewhat like the like natural selection will occur. Someone, no matter what, is the most confident like out of them, even if, even if in general you have a ton of very low confidence people, someone will, re- like the person who, like even if you have a bunch of like out of 10 you got like nine ones and a two that two is going to rise up <laughs> right you know <laughs> yes yes and and i this happened to me i think at at summer camp one year i used to go mm-hmm. on these like canoe outings where yeah. you would be out there for like a week and you would travel uh like 60 miles on like the the new river or something and then you'd be making stops every like 10 12 miles a day and you get through the whole thing and whenever i would go and do these i, I had like my one friend uh, like family friend who I, like I would go and do them with. So I knew like one person and it seemed like every time I went, it was the same thing. Like I would get there and like my confidence level would be like very low. I would assume that I was like far and away the worst canoeer there that like, that I was going to have to like be really like, you know, like quiet and calm and like, like maybe slowly like speak up as like any amount of confidence came to. Right. And on both trips that I went on, I did find that like, the second or third day in, it was a situation where somehow, some way I realized that like these people did like me or they like, they did look up to me. And like, it was, it was like a really weird effect that I remember it having like all my psyche where it was all of a sudden I was kind of like, everybody's like following everything I say weird, you know? And it's like, this is, this is like really odd or, or like, you know, if, if two people are having an argument and, and I interject, the tide is going to go with me. Right. And it's like, uh, mm, this has not happened before. And it, it could be the case that you're dealing with, you know, nine, 10 kids versus like a classroom. Uh, you've of, like, you've like activated a superpower or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have, I have two stories about this. Okay. okay. One was a similar situation where it was my first year at college and I signed up for, um, like some sort of like outdoor rock climbing excursion. Yes. Yeah. It was very fun. 
And uh, it's typically one of these things where in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to go do this as like a way to make friends. But then you show up and you find out that everyone else who's done it has decided to do it as existing friends. You're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, man. I thought everyone here would be trying to meet people. And now, uh, okay, whatever. It's fine. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. We'll just make, we got we to roll with it. What that you shows know? though is that you have guts. Right. Like that, like that you, it's like everybody else was like, yeah, I got like four friends who agreed to do this with me. Yeah. And you, you were like, I showed up alone. Yeah. I like, I want to rock climb, please. This will be fun. Right. You guys will like rock climbing and we will do it. And then, yeah. So anyway, though, we went and throughout the course of the day, it slow, like, even though I think everyone there had basically never been rock climbing except for like the instructors or whatever. Everyone was basically like interested. Like this would just be a fun thing to go do today. Sure. Yeah. But so by the end of it, I think it had become apparent, uh, much to the surprise of even myself, that maybe I was the best person at the sport. Okay. Um, besides the, you know, the people who were instructors who went and did this like on the weekly. Sure. Or whatever. But it was quickly apparent that I was the, the best one there. It was very weird. Like by the end of the day, it was like everyone like, yeah, it was like, Oh, this guy, he knows what's up. He's good. Yeah, it like, let's was try that, that rock. You know, Jonathan, go try it. Like, I'll boulder up here. Do, do you think it made you better? <clears throat> well, Ben, as is the case with stuff like this, it's it's like the moment you think you look cool, you discover you've had your pants on backwards all day or something. You yeah. know, and, and yeah. so for yeah. a moment, yeah, it's like yes. At first, I do think that was the case. It was like, oh man, like yeah, let's go try that one or let's go try that one, and we'd go and be like, oh my god, I made up another one. This is amazing. Like, how cool. And then we're like. Ugh. We were like leaving and there was like one more. I was like, ooh, can we go try? Let, let's go do that one. And I made it up it. Fine. But then the down climb, Ben, the down climb was no good. Oh, no. Down climbing, if you don't know, way harder, way harder to go down than it is to go up. We were just bouldering. There's no ropes. There's just natural rocks. It wasn't like a big mat pad at the bottom or anything. I mean, they had like crash pads, but whatever. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Anyway. Which, are, which are kind of like really, really hard mattresses that you lay on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I was down climbing the last rock of the day. And so I'm, you know, as, as tired as I would be, and I could just, I could feel it happening. I was like, I'm losing grip on the rock. And it was just like, my feet aren't on anything. And if I let go, I'm going to fall and hit the ground hard. (laughs) And it was like, I, and there's like, there's like, like time slows down. There's like three seconds of just knowing like the thing I'm holding, I do not have a good grip on and I am losing grip. And I, there is no, there's nothing else for me to grab. And my feet are on nothing. And it, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. And then it's like, and then you're just falling. And it's like this terrible, like, there's no, there's no the, like, how fast can I solve this problem? There's no solving it. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Time is running out. Time is running out. So fast. So fast. Like, there's nothing to grab. And then I fell and I, like, landed on my, like, ankle. And it didn't break. Uh, thank goodness. Although I'm not, it may as well have. Like it almost would have been better because then I would have like actually gone to a doctor and seen it. And they were just like, no, you can move it. You're good. It was like swollen to the size of a softball for like three weeks. I was limping around campus. It was terrible. Oh, Awful. No. no I just, yeah. Any confidence I had, gone. Gone. Shot right out the window. You almost had it. Almost had it. Almost had it. What was my second story? About? Oh, oh, oh. This is my other superpower story where suddenly it felt like you could like control the other people or something. Okay. Okay. We were at cross country camp. Yes. You remember it. Appalachian State University. Yes. Yes. In Boone, North Carolina. In Boone, North Carolina. So uh, something that would frequently crop up as an activity between runs was uh, poker. Do you remember this? I do remember this. Yeah. 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 So people would come and we just like play uh, Texas Hold'em between runs. And I will tell you that um, I've, you know, uh, throughout being a teenager and playing poker, with like uh, chips and stuff, I was it was always basically just complete actual gambling. Like, oh, maybe you know, yeah, like yeah. Any amount like, of skill that came along with like bluffing or reading the other person's cards or faces or expressions, none of that never really came into play. However, at cross country camp, I don't know if the difference was that we didn't play with chips; we just played with like actual change or something. Let me comment on that real quick. Yeah, I, I do remember the the very first year we did this. It seemed like. Everybody had change, you know, from like the gas station, you know, like yeah. in your backpack just from years of lunch money excess that had kind of compiled. But like it seemed like across the 15 guys who were on the team who were all playing together, there there might have been like 
between 12 and $14 and like miscellaneous change. Yeah. And so it was kind of like there was, there was a very finite amount of this resource. Yeah. So like the idea of like winning like four quarters on a single hand was like, it was like, whoa, whoa. that was like, that was a big win. That was a big win. And I mean, even like, yeah, it was like, it was like three pennies, you know, it's like, oh, man, yeah, you're only playing like, what for like, got? yeah, like, you're not playing with much sense. Yeah. On the yeah, table. yeah. So like, you know, absolute best case scenario for the person who won everything at the end, you know, the entire Ziploc bags worth of change. Exactly. Was going to be walking home with like, yeah, $14 yeah, or like something. 14, $15 or whatever. It, it made the currency feel so important. It did. And this is honestly, this is like the power of like microtransactions and stuff. Sure. You know, like when you're playing on your phone or something and you buy some sort of like in-game currency and then like you spend that currency and it just feels fine. That's having the chips. That's why you have the chips, yeah. right? Because it doesn't, you don't feel that bad about betting away these chips. These aren't real money, but they are real money. They are real money. And the difference is, I don't, I, so I don't, I, I've never, I always thought that was the difference is that we were playing with actual change. And even though it was, yeah, like pennies, nickels, dimes, you know, a, a big win would have been like a whole dollar in one hand. Right. You know, that like, okay, one dollar, not a big deal. But like the difference on everyone's psyche was like so obvious. And I do not know what it was, but it happened two years in a row that while we were playing poker, it was like I had a superpower and like I could just control everyone on the table. Like I would look at my hands and I would just like either know whether I should fold or go and I can know exactly like I could just look around and be like, okay, that's what that's showing, 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 showing. And you could just tell like, oh, what what they bet? They're bluffing. What they bet? They've got something good. I have something better. It was like, I, I could not tell you what it was about it, but it felt like I could just like will what was happening at the table, like hand after hand. That's like, wild. It was unbelievable. And I was like, the first time it happened, I was like, that was cool. like, oh man, I just won like a bunch of hands. Like, that's a good one. I, I, I walked away with more money. This was crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it worked. But then the next year it happened again. And I was like, something is happening. Like, I don't know what is going on in my brain right now, but it was like, I, I, I don't know. I could just read everything. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's fascinating too, because people always talk about this idea of like beginner's luck, you know, yeah. so like you can go out and you can like do something. And I, I sometimes I do think there is like an odd line where <laughs> you're like, you know, enough to be dangerous but not too much to be anxious yeah you know so it's almost like it's like if everybody knows you as good then it's like oh you have on top of everything else the additional pressure right of then like performing yeah and so like a lot of times like i have used the word like the underdog advantage when it comes to like competitive play mm -hmm. because if i mean probably also because i'm a virginia tech Hokies fan who the Hokies lose to the underdogs what I have to imagine is statistically more than any other team, but it's like you come in and yeah. you can like watch these, you know, tech is like a division one team. You can watch this division two team come in and it's like to, to the division two team that might be like, Oh, and four versus like the six and O oh Hokies. It's like, if like winning this game is like winning the world championship, it's like, we will flood the field. It doesn't matter. We haven't won a game this whole season. Like beating this team is remarkable, right? Like that's a bat. It's a trophy. We get to keep, even though there's no trophy, even though this isn't a televised event, even like all of those things, it means so much to those people. And if they start getting like that edge, it's like, it's on, we can do this. Like, yeah. Like we can win. Yeah. And at, at that point in time, I think you have two things happening where, you know, the per the person who is expected to win, it's like now they're gripping onto something with their entire might and it's like they're over gripping it. Yeah. Whereas, whereas the other team is like, they've got everything firing on all cylinders. Like right. everything feels natural. It's like everything we do is winning. Everything, everything we do is we working. Do is winning. Yeah. It's like, you're just running straight up the middle. Somehow there's a gap every time you're like, how is this happening? This shouldn't be happening. But like the question to me is, is like that team on that day, if you could take all of those people firing on all cylinders, it's like, are they just literally like in that moment, a truly spectacular team? Oh, this, this is a crazy thing just in sports though. Like, yes, the answer is yes. Like, I think they could beat, they could just, they could beat anyone. If you swapped players, like all of a sudden, it doesn't matter. They're just right. like firing. And you see this happen in, I think in basketball specifically a lot. Okay. Like this, this happens like on a dime where all of a sudden, like you go back and forth and be like, Oh yeah, basket here. You know, each team will be scoring baskets back and forth. Maybe one team scores two in a row. Maybe that gets, you know, five or six points ahead, but all of a sudden someone will get like a steal and they'll just get a breakaway and they'll go boom, slam dunk. And then like they'll intercept the throw in 
from the other team and another shot. And then it's like they miss it. They get a re and it's like all of a sudden, like the momentum is just like visceral. Like you can feel it in the air and it's like nothing is going to stop this team right now. And nothing except timeouts, which is what, and like you'll see coaches do it. Like the coaches will recognize like the hey. team who's on the receipt, like the, the receiving end of the, the beating here, right? Like they'll be like timeout, like stop, like because they know their team has been all of a sudden just like something is wrong. Everything is clicking on the other side in like a way that is like magic. Yes, and, yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, it's like you've like let go of everything. It's like you've let go of all insecurities. It's like you yeah. have you have pure belief in yourself, and it's like oh, oh. I mean, I've I've had I feel like I've had it on a handful of occasions in my life, and it's like it is like a, this unstoppable feeling. It, it's like, yeah, it's on. Yeah. Like I can I can do anything right now. Yeah. So that's uh, being in the zone, I guess. I being don't know. The, how do we get here, though? How do we get here? We were talking poker. about confidence. Yeah, poker. Yeah, confidence. All that stuff. We've segued a few times, as is the as is the custom here on uh, the pop. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Well, I mean, we can we can potentially just change, right? Yeah, change. we can. We can take. You know, we can change wherever we want, man. Transition. Transition. <laughs> We're still in the exact same spot, but still. Okay, so there is there's another thing that I've wanted to talk about because I've it's it's like it's it's closing in around me right now in this way that I'm like, oh man. Like I, I've been like aware of it and I've been like kind of telling some of my friends about it like in a very like deep thought conceptual kind oh, of way. Oh, here we go. But like the the as it draws nearer, I'm like, no, this is real. This is totally real. This is this has been a thing that I didn't realize I was relying on, and now it's about to expire. And now <sighs> Okay. 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 So, uh, we we have talked about the TV show Survivor before. You've you've watched a ton of it. You've applied for the show. I have all yes. sorts of stuff. Um, during during COVID, Allie and I watched quite a bit of it. Got pretty in tune with it. And one of the things that I remember one of the characters talking about as a strategy somewhere along the way was was keeping a person around specifically as as sort of like a. As a shield. As a shield. Yeah. Who the player is, in question is Tony, who is one of two two-time champions. Got it. Okay. So spectacular at it. And it's like the idea behind it, and it feels so counterintuitive, but it's like, hey, who is the most athletic, charming, good-looking person here? Keep them. Keep them at all costs. It's like everybody else sees them as a threat, which means they don't see me as a threat. Exactly. You know, and it's like, it's like, I am smart enough to see the big picture. Eventually, it will not be hard to get everybody on board to get rid of the extremely charming, good-looking, athletic person who's going to win everything. Right. It's like, this person is a walking bullseye. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 like, it's not a hard sell. So keep them here. Exactly. And then at some point in time, I'll just be able to be like, how about this person now? How about this person right but, now? Because they're going to win, and we can't has that. The right. problem is, if you get rid of them earlier, then suddenly, like, yeah, I'll just use Tony as the example. His his argument would be like, if I get rid of them, suddenly I'm the good-looking, charming, athletic person who everyone's going to want to get rid of. Right, but nobody's looking at me because they're all looking at Malcolm. Exactly. You know, and exactly. it's like, yeah, it's like, so, okay, I've been having this exact thing. Uh, that This feels like very, like, that feels like from a like very manipulative standpoint, this is less that, but more um, the, like, the pending pregnancy, which we are now getting closer to. We're at, as of recording, 26 weeks in. And um, we have, we, we, we keep talking about our, our good buddy Mike's wedding is is now like 10 days out. And his wedding, like, I am the best man, and Alice is the maid of honor, and, like, our dad is performing the ceremony. So we're, like, pretty heavily involved yes. in this wedding. Right. And so as a result, it's been, like, a like a like somewhere I've been able to put a ton of mental energy. Yeah. And it's been, like, I've been able to be focused on it. I'm extremely excited about it. It's been, like, a total blast for me, like, to, to get to be so involved, which if... If you are at the age where you are not quite at the point where like your friends and such stuff are getting married, all weddings when you are involved with the wedding is way more fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like you are royalty for that day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you at the wedding party is like there. That is like the, the leader, the fun leaders. The fun, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody's, everybody's like looking to you. Yeah, like it's you like set what, the tone. Right. It's yeah. like one of the days where you get to know that you get to have like that superpower for the yeah. day. It's like planned. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but the big thing is, is that it's been my shield on like my nerves about our due date. Oh, because it's been like it, like the whole time it's like, look, before she ever gets here, we've got this huge occasion we have to get through mm -hmm. like like that that like there is so much focus that needs to be put into that before 
like the nursery needs to be made before I need to start like hanging pictures on the wall and, and like assembling things and, and like, you know, I don't know, figuring out like which bottles we're going to use and stuff like that. Like all of those like questions. Yeah. And I feel like what's happening now is it's like, it's like, Oh man, I'm like two weeks away from my shield being gone. And then it's going to be like all of a sudden the full weight of this thing is going to come uh, all at once. like like all of the nerves you've had you've been like don't worry nerves I'll put you behind this dam because I can't worry about you right now because uh, there's the wedding I got to worry about that so I'm just going to I recognize you I'm putting you over here yes. and all of a sudden the 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 dam that is the wedding itself is about to break yep because it's going to be gone and then all those nerves are going to come flooding back and you're going to be like oh no and you yeah are you, so are you like uh, like uh fearful of like this like yeah like the tsunami I, I think that I'm just fearful that like that that I have like very safely tucked away those nerves for for quite some time mm-hmm. and and just that like I'm gonna have to like look at them <laughs> you know and seem like oh man no but on the whole for what it's worth I am I am every single day more and more and more excited yeah. uh, like about you know getting to getting to meet her and everything and it's I mean it's so funny too because like uh there there is some amount of truth to the fact that like the more friends that you have that have kids and like the more times you've like kind of gone through the motions and everything there starts to sort of be that like like at first like the first uh like super close baby to me like in my proximity was luke yeah and it was kind of like just the very fact that he was there that i could hold him that there were like onesies like every single thing about like him being this like new member of our family was like cool and fun and exciting right. and, like like i was taking in like every morsel of it but then there's also kind of the, yeah like the very simple reality of of like tiny babies which is that they basically sleep poop and eat yeah and it's like you don't get to like know their personality that much like i get excited as like all the kids get older because it's like oh look see them like make choices yeah and like that is like what's really interesting like what are they going to do what are they going to be like how Mm -hmm. much are they going to be like my brother like you know all of these types of things and um I i would say with with our baby it's like we know the times of day like that she kicks the most and to me like that's already personality right it's like i'm already like you are just incredible. Whoa. It's like mornings and evenings, Morning. like clockwork. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, so it's like, it's like so far from like, you know, a choice. Yeah. Like the, the types of things I just described personality, but it's like, no, no, I'm getting to know her. I now know things about you. And it's like, that's amazing. It is crazy. <laughs> it's so cool. So it's, on the whole, I, I, yeah, I don't want anybody to think that I'm not like more excited than anything else. Uh, it sounds like you're like holding back tears as you're just talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm really stoked. <laughs> I'm really stoked. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be very exciting. But just know, just know, Ben, that there is a parental inevitability that one day it's just going to be you and your little girl and she's going to have sponges. <laughs> I'm not gonna and, be able to stand it. Yeah, no, you're gonna feel. That's the other thing. Yeah, like I said, they were Nick and Nate all weekend, and I'm just like, like you know, it's stressing me out, and it's like so much work. But then you go put them down, and you just like you just look at them, and just like I just love you so much. I want you to feel better. I know, I, I know, I know, yeah. I know. It's like the the empathy that I'm sure that you have with your own kids is just like beyond anything. And yeah, I, that's the other thing too is I, I like the. You've talked about it before. I think like the realization, like being able to watch some of the Pixar movies from like the parents' perspective mm-hmm. instead of like from typically assuming like that you're that you are Andy, that you are Riley. It's like now all of a sudden maybe you are like the parents oh. of those characters. Oh yeah, and and that new lens. The other thing too, though, for me is that that has like filled in a little bit is starting to review moments of my life f- more from mom and dad's perspective mm-hmm. than my own. Yeah. And being like, oh my gosh, what what must it have been like? So like we we've told like the story about like my speech contest that just got like completely yeah. like botched or whatever. Like what like as a kid, probably like one of the hardest like individual moments that I had to go through, which on the whole was probably saying a lot that like that that was like one of my bigger struggles. But I, I really can't imagine what it was like for mom. Oh ha- yeah, like having to like watch that what? happen. Yeah, like, no, it'd be like like oh no he's gonna yeah. talk about this on a podcast 20 years from now <laughs> which i am more than that like 23 yeah. years 23 from now years from now yeah when do you think podcast was first introduced to the dictionary <sighs> good question should we throw out random numbers and then have ethan fact check us okay let me guess i'm gonna say mm, has to at least be 
after the first iPod, right? Do you think so? Do you think do you think that iPods were named after podcasts? I think podcasts, podcasts were, were named, named after, after iPods. iPods. Yeah. Well, when was the first iPod then? Oh, it's, it's, it was like okay. When when did when did uh, our because because our dad's cousin Nate had a Gen One iPod. Do you remember? He had it on your now boat in Vermont <gasps> one year. And he had it like plugged into the boat, and he had like the physical wheel that you spun on it. Which, by the way, the wheels were way cooler than touchscreens. The wheels were they were they, so cool. They were very, very, very cool. satisfying. Anyway, um, okay, okay, okay. So okay. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the first time the word podcast was used was in 1998. 1998. I think that's, so. I think it's got to be post 2000. I think it's like 2000, like four or something. Oh, that seems way too late to me. Okay. Way too late. Way too late. Uh. Way too. I think way too late. But w- one of us will be right. One of us will be wrong. One of us will. Be, yes. Sure. 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 It has to be once, like Apple started because i think you made podcasts i think i think it's an apple i don't know but this is this is i think podcasts are named after ipods because you made them on apple computers and it was like an export like it was like export as ipod or or like podcast or something um okay okay i'm gonna say 2004 i'm sticking with it yeah stick with it in the meantime folks at home if you would like to continue to consume the video portion of this podcast uh i would recommend you head on over to youtube.com slash popcorn culture where we have a dedicated youtube page specifically for the show if you want to click that subscribe button it's going to be i believe august 13th will be the first friday premiere episode which will be live over there yes. instead of on the super carlin brothers channel so be sure to go and check that out if you would like to support popcorn culture you could do so by going to patreon.com slash popcorn culture we have all sorts of really cool shows that we do out over there including a uh, uh, live stream event, which I believe is happening on today's episode immediately after, where there is a Q&A with you and I. Uh, Q&A on, on, with you and I. Q&A with you and I. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's like where folks over on Patreon can ask us any questions that they might have. Uh, and we can, you know, kind of have a, like a fun back and forth dialogue with those people instead of sort of like the static dialogue that we have right now where we talk and then like responses are sent and then we listen to those responses mm-hmm. and we talk about them and so on and so yeah. forth. Uh, so again, that's patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Otherwise you can find us on Reddit, which is just popcorn culture. And if you have any feedback you want to send me via email, it's popcorn culture at gmail.com. Otherwise guys until next week, pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs>